Hi everyone and welcome back. So let's continue this chapter from the previous video. So in the previous video we were able to baseline the basic setup for the Nest.js microservice. Now we will also see how you can run tests, how you can run migrations for different environments and all these things and what other configurations do we need. So if we go to package.json we will first validate all these scripts like npm run we have like build command which is going to take care of the building the whole code creating the dist folder for us then we can use npm run format which is using prettier module and it is just doing a okay and it is running the prettier on all type script code so if you have i mean uh, uh, any particular file which is having empty lines and all will be removed okay you can also do npm run build prod which is just doing npm run build and when you want to start the production you can do the start prod command but when we deploy anything to the production we also need to run the migration right so we can also attach something like npm run db migration run and then execute this okay db migration run is type or migration run so now this can be the command which i can use for the production start prod it will first run the migration right type or migration it will see in the the migration folder do we have any pending migration no migration is pending then it will start our application using this main.js file it's like you are running a compiled you are running the node.js process on the compiled output of typescript okay now we already have a setup of docker we are running everything now another important part is executing the test cases okay just is providing all the things earlier we were using nyc and mocha istanbul nyc mocha and all the the test coverage libraries here when you are running the test cases obviously you need to target to a different database test database not the, the original dev database so how you can populate the new runtime configurations for that we are using env cli module and with the help of env cli module you can pass the different runtime configurations for these npm scripts like if, if i do npm run test it should be using this env test configuration like if you are passing the database url from the env.txt then it will it is going to take the configuration from there like when you are running the end-to-end -end test using uh, just then this thing can be useful because in the end-to-end -end test you will be actually hitting the api and executing the test case so here i can say is npm run test e2e so this is end to end test i haven't executed these tests so these might be failing or passing i don't know but this is how you will be passing the different database environment for running the end to end test cases okay now this is the important part how we are using dot env cli and in the application we are using .env to populate the process environment variable from the .env or .env example. So you can see .env is there. .env.testing you should keep. From .env we are reading and we are populating these environment variables in our application. Like in the DB, uh, we should have one config service. Currently those folders are not created. I just created a dummy folder structure now basic setup is done we have a docker we have docker compose biomel docker compose override docker file and we are running the postgres container successfully and we are able to connect to that database also we have this node mode to run and watch all the changes happening in the typescript files orm config which is required for the type orm to define where the entities are where the migrations are and everything and then we have ts config which is a typescript compiler configuration it should include only these folders while compiling like src and test folder that's why in the dist you can see src and test right and output directory is this target is this 
all the TypeScript compiler options, declarations, key metadata, uh, metadata decorators, all the skip lib checks. You can actually use n number of uh, parameters here based on the documentation. Okay, now we have a linter setup, we have the prettier setup, we have the test setup, we have the basic build setup. Okay, I mean even the production build setup. You can actually deploy this application to the production. Okay, and we are going to use uh, Heroku for deploying this application. Right, so in Heroku what you need, you need a proc file. So we will talk about this, what this proc file does. This proc file will tell Heroku to run this particular script when you are executing, when you are deploying this application because we need to run the migration and then we need to run this production start. Okay. What other configurations are like we have environment, we have a docker, uh, we don't need to do anything because earlier we were doing a lot of configurations and all for the NYC, NYC RC uh, and uh, for the code coverage for the Mocha, Mocha configurations and all. Everything is now being managed by Jest. That is really awesome. You can even do the coverage. NPM run test. GOV and Mocha provides a lot of additional features. Sorry, Jest provides a lot of additional features like when you when it comes to the mocking and all, all these things. This just is a test runners and which is providing everything whatever we need. You don't need to be dependent on any other uh, library for doing it. Just is something which is being used across all different framework, React, Angular, Node.js, Express, uh, Nest.js, everywhere the uh, just is being used. Okay, so it is just uh, running the coverage. We should be able to get the coverage and the rest all the scripts are type or Right, because we are doing the npm run migration run, npm run migration generate, npm run uh, db revert. It can be db for the consistency. We can just do npm run db migration revert. Okay, npm run db mig uh, db sync, npm run db migration generate, db migration drop. You can see. It also generated a coverage for you. So this is like a win-win situation. You don't need to be dependent on all lot of modules. NYC, Istanbul, Mocha and all. Mocha, Chai and some assassin's libraries. Everything this just is providing you. And these type ORMs. You can also try some of these commands like npm run db migration generate. And you just put the file name which migration file you wanted to generate. So it will check and it will, you can see in the migration folder, it has generated this file. DB migration revert. I mean, whatever the, the last migration you uh, executed, it can be used to revert that. So DB migration revert. This command is also useful when there is a, some error in the migration, you wanted to revert it. So from the migration table, it will remove that uh, particular row. So you should be able to execute that migration again. Currently, this is in the source code, but not in the migration. So it will give an error. Now, migration sync and all, all these commands, db sync command we use when you already have the entities and you wanted to generate the, the tables out of it. So it's like it can be used only in the development environment. Migration run when you wanted to run migrations in so this argument minus t each is really helpful and important because type or migrations run in a single transaction but what we want is we want it to run each and every migration as a transaction so if one of the migration fails it should not impact the previous migrations okay so these are the migration scripts these are the test scripts and these are the linter scripts, npm run format, lint, and this is the build and deploy scripts. Okay, so things are very clear. We know each and every command which we are using. Uh, .env, .env CLI, Postgres, and dev dependencies, type ORM, NestJS type ORM, all these scripts we are using. Now, what we are going to do in this baseline is we are going to introduce type ORM. Currently, 
those modules are not there. We will also write a DB module, config module, auth module in the next JS so that we can start writing the code. Now the basic setup is done, deployment uh, setup is done. We also need to introduce one uh, CI YML like if you are using GitHub Actions or GitLab CI YML or CI CD. Otherwise the application is done. Now we can start uh, consuming the database connections and all for that what we can do is we can introduce our package npm install this is uh, there are two packages we need typeorm and typeorm so these modules will enable the typeorm in the nsjs and then we will write a database module which will read all the entities we will create a folder structure src app you can see domain inside domain we can have entities services controllers dtos these are building blocks of nsjs we will be writing controllers defining all the routes services which will are going to access to the repositories domain modules you put everything uh, I, I mean you put all the declarations of your controller services and uh, everything inside domain module import the domain module in the app module okay and we can have auth modules database module logger module all these things we are going to add in the src so i think we already have a logger module database module okay now next video is let's write the code put some controllers some services and expose an api through the swagger because nasjs is giving the support of the swagger you don't need to do anything out of the box you can just configure the swagger stuff and you write your swagger configurations and all and import that in the main main.ts okay now to build the microservice this is the basic setup now we are introducing the code so code level security what all security modules you need how to write your routes how to write your services what all things you need to take care how to write the config module to provide the configuration to your whole application how to write database module how to write a logger which can interface to the external library or external interface to aggregate the logs right all those things are important now that's let's uh, check that out in the next video hi everyone and welcome back so we are doing the baseline setup for the nestjs microservice and we have done all different kind of configuration now it's time to write some code okay so once you generate the application through nest cli you will get some default controller default module and uh, one particular service and some default test cases for it and this is your main.ts which is bootstrapping your application through app module so this is your app module one is a root module it, it is having only one controller and one service now where should we write the rest of the code you can define your own uh, folder structure and all but i will give you some specifications like this is how you can follow it you can create app folder inside src and inside domain you can keep all your controllers services all the controllers will go here all the services will go here and you can create one domain modules so here you can also make it plural like domains inside that you can have a project a cart items all these things something like this you can make it plural like domains and then you can put okay i have item and then put all the controllers services factories of the items here similarly create another folder put there its own controller factories and services but there will be too many folders right so what i did is let's say create a domain inside that put all your services controllers and add dto's interface everything here and export that in, inside one common domain module auth module if you are using some kind of authentication authorization database module which we need to connect to the database logger migrations which are getting generated and the entities like database entities we have already provided this path in the orm config app domain entities if you see dist app domain entities we will put all our database entities here so entities like user product cart uh, items contacts any kind of database or entities which we are going to create a table okay 
So these are called as simple simple entities and how we are going to create them. So what we can simply do is we can we can start with the simple folder structure like uh, this is the app module and inside domain we can start creating the controller services and all these things. So let's say we have one simple entity we wanted to create. So we will also create other migration for it. So what we can do is uh, here we have to create a migration command. Migration command we already know what is that. And we also need to set up all the other things like the DB module, the config module. Config module is all about, uh, let me just create this. Config module is on us if you wanted to introduce this in the application. What config module will do is it will take care of populating the configurations from the process.env. Okay. Now what we are planning to do is uh, let's create a swagger. So inside swagger we already have folder how to introduce the swagger module. So we just need to introduce a swagger config and swagger.ts. I, I will come to the code what we are writing here. Okay, so this is my swagger and we want to expose all my APIs through the swagger interface, right? So this is my swagger.ts. What I'm doing here is I'm just specifying, okay, what all tags I need and this is my swagger config, which is okay, nest.js templates, all the default tags, swagger interface and it is exposing one method, create a document. This create document we are going to call from main.ts so that after application boot sets, we should be able to instantiate swagger. Okay, so go to main.ts and what we are doing is swagger module.setup API v1, exp v1 will expose the swagger and create document we are, we are getting from the swagger. Okay, so we will just import that create document from swagger and then swagger module swagger module we need to import from the nest.js swagger this is the basic basic setup we need for the swagger okay then app is listening through this or if it is not provided then we first of all we will look into the process.env Otherwise, we will start on 3000 port and our application will start running here. Okay. So this is how we will set up Swagger. Now, the rest all the things like Swagger tags and all you need to configure in your DTOs, controllers and all so that this Swagger module can expose that. For Swagger module, you need two different packages. Swagger, NestJS Swagger and I think one is Swagger UI Express. Uh, let me just get that. So these two modules we need for introducing Swagger in the application. Okay, so Swagger module is done. Similarly, we will not do a heavy lifting things like adding a logger and all. Configuration module, you may need, you may or may not need. Configuration is nothing but populating the things from the process.env to your application. So either you can use simply dot uh, dot env module what dot env module does is it actually populates everything from your dot env file to your process dot env variable something like this right now whatever you are specifying inside dot env file i can access using process dot env dot node env process dot env dot database url or to make it more consistent you can write a config service config service and define okay these are all our configs i want this is like Azure config, AWS config, uh, Kafka config, or the Node.js environment config. We can manage that. Or Nest.js also provides config service that will help you to uh, get validate even the validate the parameters. Okay, the port should be of type number, the username, database username, and URL should be of type string. All these things. Okay. Now important part is the DB. DB module we are going to configure. So because it's independent module. So we are going to create a db.module.ts. db.service. 
db dot interface and db dot logger let's say for now db dot module is enough now what we are going to say in the db module if you look into how nest.js connects to uh, postgres through the typo rm it's very easy what it does is it just need a connection url you pass the connection url and that's it this is just a connection options which is taking so what we are going to do is we will write this configuration i have already covered all these things like basic basic setup of how to create database module how to create a logger module how to create a swagger and all i'm just repeating it but if you want to look into depth okay how all these things are configured you can check out my the previous playlists so this db module is nothing but what we want is uh, if you just go and check this out so how we are connecting here if you see we can just create a database module something simple like this okay type rm module we already have from the nasdaq type rm pass all the configuration that's it it's done and then type rm dot module dot for root wherever you wanted to use the the tables this is how you will do it and this is how you are defining the entities type or entities like user product card you will use all these annotations to define the entities and then you will run the operations here we are connecting to the mysql here i'm passing all the entities here you need to pass all the entities you have in the system uh, when you are bootstrapping the type or module so type or knows okay in the whole system these all the entities are synchronized through means you can do the reverse engineering from entities to the tables but in the development in the production we don't need to enable this uh, flag database user you can also pass a simple url instead of passing the four variables connection url of mysql connection url of the postgres okay and when you wanted to use any particular table in a particular module let's say there is a user module so you have to initialize you have to provide that user entity to that module so that this user service can access the user repository okay this is the additional thing which you will see in the documentation of the typo rm how it works and then inside a service what i'm doing is user repository dot find find one find all delete update all these operations i'm able to perform and we are going to manage all the relationships between these entities using one to one one to many many to many many to one using all these annotations one to one many to one many to one many to many one to many okay so uh, i mean this is it like uh, what i will do is we will create a simple uh, database module config module we can skip we can actually use the configurations from the process.env.connection url process.env.nodenv that is enough okay i mean what is the minimal microservice setup we want in the nest js rest you can expand it to any particular level we don't need what is the minimum security what is the minimum setup you need for a microservice then we will build on top of that okay uh, thanks everyone let's see the rest of the the setup in the next video and then we will start uh, building like we will start talking about the 12 factor of uh, principles one by one in maybe one or two videos thanks everyone hi everyone and welcome back so in this video we are going to do the CRUD operation for our microservice and we will also understand how we are managing the database connection okay as we have already seen in the documentation we are using type or module what all it needs is it is calling for root method and we are passing all the arguments this is one way to initialize the database connection you have to pass all your entities so what we did is okay whatever is starting with the entity.ts take all those entity as an input this is the one way of uh, initializing a type or a module with all the database credentials this is from the documentation okay what we did is we have written the same thing if you see our database module so here it is db module database module.ts here we are doing the same thing but here we are doing a dynamic initialization of a nest.js module type or a module dot for root async here we are using for root so there is a major difference here it is static initialization you are passing all those things and here we are doing dynamic initialization and i am passing those runtime configuration through the another config service 
so it is dependent on config service and logger module and from the config service only i'm getting the database url okay ssl like uh, for uh, for heroku we need ssl enabled for local environment we can keep ssl false okay this is just a check i need to add for the heroku otherwise on the local environment you can always keep ssl false this is the database connection url and uh, the type is a postgres okay so this is the database module and i have already talked about this in details in my previous nestjs videos let's now focus on the crud operation so we have all the entities this is our module here we are going to call the type orm module uh, db module dot for root and we are going to pass all our entities and entities we are going to put inside app module entity now let's say uh, if we want to create our entity we are going to create a simple crud operations quickly so what we are going to do is inside entity i'm going to create not dot entity dot ts and we will also add the migration for this so this is simple note id text is completed right simple simple columns and export default note okay so this is my type orm entity i have created the table name is a notes and for this we also need to create uh, the migration so for migration what we can do is npm run db migration i think this was the command and what we will do is we will put the the migration for this and migration is simple like what we are doing in the migration is putting what you want to create right the column structure the tables and all so we should have something in the migrations now so we can remove all these we don't need and now we have our test migration we can replace it with the the table name so the table name we are creating is notes right and i'm just giving you simple example how we do it how to execute query using migration so there are we are using type or migration apis so what we are doing is we are creating the notes table and it is a id text is completed constraint is a primary key created at an updated at okay just remove this that is just a simple example i wanted to put and in the the down query because here if we are not able to create a table we have to drop it drop table notes cool so here we are creating it here we are drop doing is sometimes the uuid it is not able to execute this function so we have to create this extension for the postgres and here we are creating id text is completed these are the three columns so if we go to our entity id text is completed boolean text is string and we have created that column and updated it so these are the two columns additional columns we have so this is our entity representation and for the same this is the migration so if i want to execute this migration successfully what i will do is uh, i will check i don't have this table already created and all and let's give a proper name to this migration notes and this is the the time stamp this is very important because the migrations are executed in the order of the time stamp so you always create a new migration and then rename it and then execute it okay first we will do is npm run build so that we can the the created migrations can be built and we will have this migration available in the dist folder okay so after adding the entity now we can add the controller services and all so i will quickly add them because it's nothing fancy controller we are adding inside this 
module and controller will be note dot controller dot ts and this controller will have a simple CRUD operations get put post I mean before the nodes entity and now we will create a node service node service is going to access the nodes repo so here we have we will create a node service dot ts because these are very basic and I have covered these many times so I don't want to invest much time in like explaining all these things right we need to introduce lordice let's add the typing for it okay not entity which we need to get from one folder above inside an entity okay and then we have a details we will get that once we create them so we can import them here okay so let's create a DTO so we have two DTOs needs to be created and we'll just copy and paste them it's like create note update note very basic nothing fancy create note will have the class note class for creating the new note you can see this is the create note and you can just add public text this is update note when you wanted to change the status of a particular note okay and we have so both these details we have created close all and now let's import these details properly everywhere so create node DTO and update node DTO we are going outside this and then only you can get this we will get from services folder okay the build errors are resolved in the controller now let's go to service here we are getting entity this we can import manually and then update not DTO we can import looks like everything is now resolved found note I think here we need to put a condition if not is found then only we will be deleting this because before delete we are just checking if the note is available or not this is fine if nothing is there then return null or not found exception whatever you think of this is our controller now go to our entity module like all the controller services will be defined inside this so we are getting service service should be export default okay not service entity should also be export default and here inside entity module we got all the entity from entities folder from the entities folder and from the services folder it is services okay we got all the entities we got all the services we just need to add a controller so what is the controller name is oh, it is complaining because it's not a it's a default export so we will get it like this and controller is a notes so we can also put it as api v1 notes and this is a notes controller add that into the entity module that's it now this domain module will be imported inside app module so that we can have the whole application running together we go to our app module so here we can just add the domain module and for the domain module I think we have to add a DB modules okay this is already added so we don't need to worry about it now we'll just do npm run build so just like a basic crud we i wrote a controller i wrote a service i wrote a simple details 
and I am not doing any kind of a request response validation, request validation using class validator or a class transformer, right? I re simply return a service, one simple entity is we have, we have already created a migration for this. Okay, and this is a simple controller having basic get put post methods, the root route is API v1 nodes, then there is a post, then there is a get and then there is a get by id. And then there is an update patch by id and then delete by id. Okay. So now we can start the application because now we are able to build it successfully. So we can start this. Before that we have the entity uh, which is nodes. So we also need to check take care of the migration. So this is the nodes migration we have. It is creating the nodes table. It ID text is completed. So let's check the details and all if everything is correct. Inside the modules, nodes controller and the DTO. Inside create we are passing all the text. Inside update we are passing text and it's completed. Inside service. Inside service, what we are doing is, and we are saving it. So looks like things are good. Here it should be ID because not there is nothing like note ID column. Here it is again ID should be of note ID. Okay. Okay. Looks like things are good. Now we can start the application. And we did npm run start debug. It is using node moon it through the node moon. So whenever we are changing the file, it is actually restarting the application. Okay. So this is our entity. This is our DTOs and this is our controller. A simple controller we have created. Now let's wait for the restart to happen and then we will see our APIs. Okay, everything is good. It is available on 3000. So these are our APIs and when I'm trying to get the node, it is saying internal server error. That means that the table doesn't exist. So what we need to do is we need to run the migration. Right? That is the only missing piece here. npm run db migration. DB migration run, what it will do is okay, let's go to the correct folder first. DB migration run will run the migrations which are kept inside this folder, this SRC migrations, and we have notes. You can see one table is created with ID text is completed. This is what we needed. Now we should be able to execute this command. And now what is the problem? Let's see because I changed something. Column not dot is completed does not found. That is correct because I changed it to is underscore completed. So this is get all nodes. Let's go to the controller. And we will just simply fix this. It's not a big problem. So this is our controller, controller is doing get all nodes and inside node service it is doing find all nodes. Find many options. Okay, let's see is completed where it is there because I have changed it. This survey is completed. Let's see what we have added in the, the table. Based on that, we will put the column. So we will check the migration first because I want to keep all the columns with underscore. So go to entity and we will just change it to is completed, which is of type boolean. So id text is completed and go to our migration again is completed of type boolean not null okay things are good now 
now we can run this and we can see all the output we can also should be able to create a new node so this is the basic setup of a simple CRUD operation for your simple microservice now we will also be able to add the end-to-end -end test cases for the nodes APIs unit test cases for the service unit test cases for the controllers so we will have a full proof microservice we will add the health check logging and all these things using logging middleware and we will be adding the security like token based security using authentication middleware auth middleware for the protected routes okay so let's see all that thing with the testing and with running all these apis these apis are fine we just need to take care of the column names right like the column mismatch will trigger and it will the query will fail so id text is completed now we are getting everything correct now you can also create uh, the the new tags using post api and we will we will also enable the swagger annotations in the dto so that you know we will also see what all payload you need in the request body that we will enable in the details i mean this is very basic we are doing it since a long time like you use a class validator and uh, api property api property so that these properties request request uh, or query parameter attribute should be visible in the swagger documentation also which you see here okay